What I'm about to open is something I've been anxiously waiting for about two weeks. It's finally here, and I can't hide how eager I am to unbox it and start exploring. Join me in this video as I unbox and review the RayQ docking station for the Mac Mini M4. Before we dive in, if you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing to this small channel. Every subscriber helps and your support keeps these videos coming. Thank you. Oh nice, it comes with a connection diagram in both English and Chinese along with the specifications. Here's the unit itself. It's not plastic, it looks like cast aluminum. The model is the Mac Mini Hub and Stand model DK5A1. Included in the box are a USB-A to USB-C cable, a flat or blade screwdriver, a USB-C to USB-C cable, and a bag of screws. The USB-C cable has a wrinkle in it, but hopefully that won't be an issue. That's everything from the box. I have to say it's a nice box. Now, let's take a closer look at the docking station. On the back, there's a USB-C port for an optional 5-volt 3-amp power supply, a 3.5mm audio jack, a USB 3.3 port with a USB-A connector, limited to 5 GB per second, an HDMI 4K port at 60 Hz, and the docking port. There's also a small hole that I assume is for resetting the unit. On the front, we have another USB 5 GB per second port, a USB 10 GB per second port, a 10 GB per second USB-C port, and two card slots. Unlike what was shown on the product page, the ports are clearly labeled, which I really appreciate because there's a big difference between 5G per second and 10 GB per second. The bottom of the unit has nothing but feet, and the top has fins to help distribute air from the Mac Mini's cooling fan. There are also two screws holding the plate under which an M2 NVMe SSD can be installed. Let's open the enclosure and see what's inside. Interestingly, I expected to see the board with the chips, but I don't. Let's go ahead and install the SSD. Before continuing, I want to test the SSD's speed in the RayQ dock compared to an external SSD enclosure I've been using. I'll use the same SSD for both tests and the same cable that came with the RayQ dock to minimize variables. The SSD is a Lexar NQ790 2TB NVMe 1.4 star, which has a top speed of 6,000 to 7,000 MB per second, so it won't be the bottleneck. In the U-Green enclosure, the SSD gives a write speed of just under 970 MB per second and a read speed of just under 870 MB per second. In the RayQ dock, the write speed is just under 960 MB per second and the read speed is just under 845 MB per second. While the RayQ dock is slightly slower, the difference is negligible in real-world use. Now that we've seen how well the RayQ dock performs as an SSD enclosure, Let's test if it has the same Wi-Fi interference issues as other USB hubs for the M4 Mac Mini. I recently watched a video where a hub with an air gap between the base and the computer had Wi-Fi problems. Let's find out if this one works with Wi-Fi or if it's a colossal fail that I'll have to return. I'm happy to report that I'm not experiencing any Wi-Fi issues caused by the RayQ dock. That's a huge relief. Now that I know the RayQ dock works, I need to decide if it's useful to me. The answer is both yes and no. I really like having multiple ports available, especially a mix of high-speed USB-A and USB-C ports. However, I'd prefer most of the ports to be at the back of the dock, not the front. Ideally, I'd keep one USB-A and one USB-C port plus the card reader at the front and have the rest hidden away at the back to avoid cable clutter. Another downside of the RayQ dock is its speed. Ideally, I'd like it to support at least Thunderbolt 3 speeds, but I have to be realistic. For a price of about $100, Thunderbolt 3 or better is not available, at least not yet. Fortunately, I still have unused Thunderbolt ports on the back of my Mac Mini. My last critique of the RayQ dock is more about the design of the Mac Mini itself. The placement of the power button is awkward. I've heard reviewers dismiss this issue by saying, oh, I never turn it off, so I don't care about the switch. But that kind of excuse feels like a slippery slope. Some other Mac Mini docks have addressed this design flaw, but unfortunately, this one hasn't. All things considered for what's available on the market at the end of 2024 for the M4 Mac Mini, this is probably the best dock you can get. By this time next year, though, things might change. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Every subscriber helps. If you have any questions, um, I'll do my best to answer them in the comment section.